Hey folks, welcome back to the Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. Today we're taking a look at Build It With Brian. Build It With Brian supports two to four players, ages eight and up, and each game takes between one and two hours to play. Great. Well, let's go build a house with Brian Balmer from HGTV. So in this classic roll and move style game, you're gonna be building a house and you're gonna be trying to be the first one to do so. So this is what a typical setup looks like. Each player is gonna get a foundation to put all their jobs into. Everyone receives a $500,000 mm -hmm. and one of these cool player pieces that all look like construction or tools to do construction on a house. Now setting up the board itself is very easy. You'll start with setting the building supply center in the middle of the board. And this is a tray that looks kind of like your house construction grids or foundation, but it's different in the fact that it's deeper. It does have spaces for four copies of each of the 25 different jobs you'll have to complete in order to build your house. Now these start all filled and all your foundations will start empty. And as you travel around the board, you'll be collecting these. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. In addition to this, you'll be setting up the two decks of cards. There's a good day, bad day deck, which allows you to either... Uh, Have a good day or a bad yes, day. Yes, exactly. You can get additional <laughs> jobs for free. You might lose a job you've already purchased. You might gain or lose turns or move to a place that could be advantageous to you. Your cost more or cost less might involve uh, additional costs, things you have to pay. Some yes, money. Or uh, things that allow you to get money you didn't expect. And right. the money is very important in this game because if you go bankrupt, you're, you're, out, of, you're out of the game. Totally so, out of the game. So even though this is a little bit different than what you might be used to with some right. a, a similar game, um, you actually start with $500,000, as Mark said. So this is all a game of managing the managing money you've got the to money, spend. Yeah. So as you travel around the board, you'll see... Uh, these squares that match the job tiles in your building supply center. Now on the on the these out here, you'll see not only the number that matches the number out here and the picture that matches the, the picture on the tile, but you'll see the cost as well. So as you're looking for particular jobs, you can say, wow, I really want this one, but do I have enough money for it? Because right. you might be lucky enough to land on it, but unlucky enough that you don't have enough money right. to pay for it. So you might get what you want, but then immediately go, go bankrupt. bankrupt. Yes, exactly. So you, so. Have, you have to be careful about how you man manage your money in this game, yes. in the game, as well as uh, um, where you're trying to land and mm -hmm. rolling the appropriate number of dice. Now, as Randy said, dice is very important in this game. However, you have some choices with these dice. On your turn, you have three dice. You can roll one, two, or three. And the reason you might choose to only roll one is if you're trying to achieve a job that's in sequence. So you do have all these jobs, one through 25, and you are trying to get them in order. So you're really trying to get those early ones first. And we'll talk about a little bit why in a moment, why that's super important. But as you move across the board, there's a couple different paths. You can always move clockwise around the board, but you can also move through the middle of the board, which might be advantageous if you're trying to decide where to spin those dice that you just rolled. Right, right. So you might say, well, I've, you know, if, if I move 12, let's say you rolled a couple dice, got mm -hmm. two sixes, and um, you move 12, you say, well, if I move there, I've already got that particular right. job. But if I instead move through the center, I might land on a space that I don't have yeah. yet. So those are some of the trade-offs. Yeah, and it's very important to note that whatever job you land on, you must purchase if you don't already have it. Right. Another reason you might choose uh, one, two, or three dice mm -hmm. is because uh, if you roll two, you get doubles, yes. you get to move again. But if you roll three, three. and get triples, you get to move to any, any place spot. on the board and purchase that job if you don't already have it. So there's some nice ways to manipulate the dice a little bit. Right. And there's also the trade-off for those of you who know a little about, bit about dice probability. You're yes. saying, well, if I had roll two dice, Indeed. then the most likely outcome is going to be around seven. So I'm really trying to get the space that's about six away. So maybe I should roll two dice yep. instead of one dice and hope for a six. So there are some interesting twists on that classic roll and move style gameplay here. There are indeed. And another difference between uh, what you might be used to is there is a bank square here mm -hmm. in the corner. And when you pass it, you get $1,000. So that's yep. good. But in addition to that, if you actually land, land on, on it, it, you get $2,500. And again, uh, that's important because bankruptcy is really bad. It is. Game. And that $2,500 is in addition to the $1,000 yep. you'll get when you pass it. So this might be a reason you start taking shortcuts to the center of the board, maybe rolling three dice frequently, mm -hmm. just so you can pass that or hopefully land on it frequently yeah. and build up your bank account before pursuing some of the more expensive jobs. Right. Now, perhaps the heart of this game is sequencing your building oh, or right. your construction. And there is some take that in this game. There is. It can right? be. It can be, right? So in the way you build out your house is super important because you need to build one through 25 and 
the numbers that break up after, let's say you build one through 10, perfectly done, and then you've got gaps, uh, 11, 12, 13, mm -hmm. and then you start at 14, maybe you have an 18, a 20, and a 25, right? right. Something like <clears throat> that. And, and those instances, folks who land on spots or those jobs that you have not in sequence can steal them from you. Exactly, so Mark said, let's say he has one through 10 built in sequence, and then spaces in 11, 12, 13, and 14, and then he's got some smatterings beyond 14. Right. So when I land, let's say I land on square 18, I have the choice of either buying it from the bank, yep. buying it uh, from the building supply center in the middle of the table for the value on the square, mm -hmm. or if I wanted to kind of prevent Mark from making much progress, uh, I can pay a 20% premium, and instead of buying it from the building supply center, I can build it from or buy it from Mark. Yep. Basically, I pay him the cost. He doesn't yep. actually lose money in the deal. Right. Um, but I take the job tile from his foundation, uh, from his house construction grid, and put it in mine instead. So that yep. puts yep. him back a little bit. However, as I said, it does cost me that 20% 20 20%. premium. Yeah. Um, which goes to the bank. Which goes to the bank, not to Mark. Not, yeah. And there is a bit of that. As you see people uh, beginning Getting closer to, to, to winning, you, see, yeah. you can take advantage of the fact they have some, some yeah. jobs out of sequence. And that's why you might choose to focus on building sp specific jobs. You say, look, I'm going to take shortcuts around the board just so I can get this eight, so I can get some more jobs in sequence and yep. protect those jobs from being purchased by other people. Indeed. And so the first one to complete all 25 jobs is the winner of the game. Now, one interesting thing about these, the sequence of these jobs is that they do have something to do with the, the sequence of jobs if you actually built a house. Right, and that, that is interesting, right? Because they did take the time to actually put all the things you would need to do to build a real house into this. So if you're construction-minded, that it definitely conveys that theme in this game. Right. And if you're a fan of Brian Ballmer from HGTV, you'll also see him in several of the tiles. Indeed. He, he's kind of, it's not a where, where's Waldo, it's kind right. of like a where's Brian, uh, because he does appear in the tiles and, and the squares in the game. So if you're a fan of his, you, that'll be a pleasant surprise. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, this prototype is really polished and well done. It is. And these uh, construction or tool pieces are really, really nicely done. Way better than a shoe. Okay? Way <laughs> better than a shoe. We'll say that. Um, and this is definitely that classic roll and move, but with a twist and super family friendly, easy to engage with. Yeah, you could definitely pull in, I, I think, people who are less inclined to play board games, you know, maybe at a family reunion or something, as yep. long as people like rolling dice, I think there's, yep. it's easy for them to get into. In fact, if you're the person who purchases the game or you get it for a gift, this is the entirety the, of the rule yeah, manual, okay? It's Which pretty is, nice. It's clearly written, very easy to understand. Super easy. And if you're afraid of, hey, well, if I buy something from someone else's grid, uh, I don't want to calculate the 20%. Right. Well, that's taken care of as well. As well. <laughs> They've this already put little that. Sheet for you. Yeah, so for each of the tiles, they calculate the 20%, so they yep. tell you the amount you'd have to pay to the bank. So they've done a really good job of making this accessible to a, Very accessible. To a broad group of people mm -hmm. who don't typically play board games. Right. So if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. That's right. And I think that's it from us. Yep. And until next time, folks, we'll, we'll see, see you at the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.